For January 11th, 2019, we talk about Tetris Effect, Stellaris, and we ask you what the worst game you ever beat was. Also, if you want to vote in our title of the year contest, go to our Facebook page and vote by Monday, the 14th. Welcome to level 269. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Jella Prendes. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level, a podcast for people who love video games. Welcome to 2019. It's already weird. Yeah! <laughs> oh, thank you for understanding us being away. Uh, it's super inconvenient when uh, holidays fall on Mondays for us. But we're back. We're happy to be here. It's going to be a good time. We've, uh, we're, we're rested, I think, but well, we're not, we've been working Except hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in case, in case I kind of lose it, I've been, uh, recording for six and a half hours already. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like a, it's almost a full-time job now. And I don't know how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so yeah, big new stuff happening. There's so much, so much right now. Um, how's, how's everybody doing? Well, I did a 20-mile ruck on Saturday night. I went to sleep on Sunday at 3 a.m., and then today I woke up at 3 a.m. to go teach fitness. So I have been up, and I've had a weird schedule, so my voice probably sounds uh, different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm all right. Uh, I just have not had a whole hell of a lot of sleep. <laughs> well, how'd the ruck go? Uh, it was fine. Uh, it was, it's basically, okay, uh, Go Ruck, which is uh, the company that runs a lot of the rucking events and also sells uh, rucks and other rucking gear, uh, published a resolution ruck, which is a 50 miles by January 15th challenge. So um, my rucking club, like there's lots of people who are, um, you know, preparing for different events, such as the Star Course, which is a 50 mile, 50 plus mile 50 to 60 mile, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, rucking event uh, that's going to be happening in Houston in June, I want to say it is, and uh, other things like that. So there are a lot of people who are building their miles up for that. So there were people already doing heavy mileage anyway, but um, we had a couple of newer people come out for this ruck, and they made it for about 12 miles, and then they had to stop, like one of them just got you know, shredded, like mm. his traps were dead and he didn't have a hip belt to have any of the weight transferred to his hips. And, you know, like he is a veteran. And so he, you know, he's out of, out of, he's deconditioned. He has not been in the military for a while and he's deconditioned physically. Mm. So he was like, Oh yeah, 20 miles, no big deal. Oops. No, yeah. uh, you haven't been doing that in a long time. You're not ready for that just yeah. to pop out of the blue. Uh, you're not in, in the shape you were, you know, and then, uh, another lady, she got her foot wet and her sock wet and then ended up oh, like she had a spare pair. She had a spare pair of socks, but then she somehow managed to like, when she was pulling them out, ended up dumping her water bladder on them. Oh. <laughs> and so they oh. got wet. She well, was, like, was her foot just one big blister by the time she stopped to address it? Um, well, she she stopped um, after it had, you know, been like a couple of miles like that. And then, you know, like after a couple more slower miles, because, you know, that's when everybody started hurting. Mm -hmm. um, then they ended up calling an Uber and they were just like, OK, yeah. well, we're going to call an Uber and go back to the car. But um, I continued on from there. And, you know, along with uh, one of the other guys in the rucking club. And we just had this great long conversation. It was wonderful. And uh, there's also a marathon ruck, like 26.2 miles at the wow. end of the month. So I might be doing that. Depends on uh, timing with other events and stuff I got going. Yikes. But I forgot, guys, that I registered for a 12-hour rucking event I didn't even remember that I signed up for. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, like, what was, was the canning. story of that? Did you just be like, oh, I want to uh, sign up for that, and you saw you were already on the roster? <laughs> uh, here's so uh, the Jackalope Jam is something uh, that happens every year over here, and it is run by Trail Racing Over Texas. Well, when they first, because I had done it last year, and I did six hours of rucking, and then I was like, okay, well, 
I want to do this event next year. I'm thinking about doing the 12 hour next year because I, you know, did all this other endurance stuff this year. Mm-hmm. Well, they announced everything last April and said, okay, well, here are the dates for everything for next year. If you register now, you get a discount. And they announced that on Facebook, on a Facebook live feed. Well, I was out and about at the time, but I still wanted to get the discount. So like I pulled up the Facebook live, got the code, uh, and then registered on my phone. But so many people were in there registering that the system you know, bugged out. It went through, but I didn't get a confirmation email. I searched all of my emails and I never got one, but I was out and about. So like, I forgot about it by the time I got home. (laughs) And then like, I just, I, I don't know. I probably had a lot of stuff going on because in April was, you know, like when I was trying to recover from my dad being in the hospital and trying to, you know, ramp up through, I was in the middle of two fifty Ks at that point. And so like, I had a lot going on. Yeah, Um, Yeah. And I just like, never followed up and just forgot. And for some reason I never put it on my event list. Cause I actually have a list on my phone and I add it on my calendar. So like, you know, I, I put it somewhere, but I guess I didn't, um, do all of that because it was so far out or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, so I went and I looked at it and I was like, Oh yeah, I was thinking about doing the 12 hour. And then I was like clicking around, Oh, Hey, I'm registered for it. And then I had to <laughs> resend my registration email cause I never got the first one. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess I'm going to go to this at the end of February. So surprise. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 So, so that's my life. Uh, so I'm doing the resolution ruck 50 miles by January 15th. I've already got 25. So, um, no big deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No big deal. Yeah, just, just, just uh, start miles, no big deal. Strong, yeah. Eh, no big <laughs> deal. It's all good. I'm also doing a 30 day yoga challenge um, where there's a different pose every day. You can see all that on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. So um, there's that. And then I'm also doing CG Fit, which is the CG um, wellness challenge thing. And is that all the challenges I'm doing? I don't remember. I I might be doing another one. It's I don't a bunch. know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but today was uh, uh four limbed staff pose. So hmm. there you go. You can see my cool pineapple shorts. Yeah. Pink pineapple shorts. But anyway, so um yeah, I've been busy trying to get back into all the stuff. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um Ben, you were alone with some dogs. I was. I've also been playing uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, and I've been playing as the Wii Fit trainer, so I'm kind of doing yoga as well. Little, so that's been yeah. my challenge lately. <laughs> just, a re- just, a, um, just a real balance wait. focused kind of. <laughs> yeah. The last week I had the house to myself. Uh, everyone was still gone for holidays, so I was able to hang out with my dog and take care of her and then uh, go hiking on the green belt and stuff, and it was really nice. But uh, the so the, one of the hiking trails in Austin is flooded, though, from the rain from the last couple of weeks, so that Made it a little bit harder to uh, do, but it was still fun. Nice. Yeah. Um, for, for for me, so Greta got fixed, or I took Greta to be fixed. I, I don't need to put that in passive voice. No, we, we did it on New Year's Eve. Um, <laughs> yeah. Was, End of an era. Yeah, I know, right? 20, 2018. Because you couldn't, you couldn't stand any more going into 2019. No, no it was really trying. It, it, it got to be about like a solid month of dealing with a cat in heat. Mm. Um, and it was too much. Like I, I called uh, and I got them to bump my appointment up to like a holiday because, I mean, I, I think maybe I threatened to give her back, but I really wouldn't have. <laughs> done that it was it was a bluff um Mm -hmm. but yeah it was it was a lot but she's she's fine now and she's got a shaved belly which is really funny she 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 looks she looks mega goofy um so that's fun (laughs) (laughs) yeah the other thing we did the uh the uh, patreon restructure that is going well so people who haven't seen that from other shows uh go check it out there's a believe like you get new stuff um for different tiers it's uh, and you made it you made an awesome announcement video about that as well. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I, I like it was super fun to go out to those different uh, places in the wilderness, and also <laughs> I got I got Shawshank in the backdrop background, which yeah, was fun. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yes, everybody's voice uh, was exactly as it ought to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yay! Uh, cre- credit to Gary for the for the idea on that, and it was uh, you know it worked to execute, but it was pretty fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, that sounds like banter to me. 
I think we ought to, yeah, we ought to talk about some video games and things like that. Um, I see no reason why in this new year we shouldn't do the regular kind of show, the brief, the multiplayer, and the grind. And we can get started with the brief, the brief where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Uh, Jollies, yours will probably be a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit more of a story. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm going to do mine because it's your standard Cole yeah. announces something kind of deal. Sure. Um, so humble, uh, is a video game store online. Uh, it's where a lot of people buy their steam codes. They do their bundles and stuff. It's really diversified. Um, something that they have put out today as we're recording, I believe is that they are now mm -hmm. selling switch and 3ds games. Um, so breaking into Nintendo, I got an email about this and I was like, Hmm, cause they had a, they had a discount coupon. Uh, this is not the first time they've done console stuff. Like they've had PlayStation bundles in the past. Um, uh, and I think they sold like Wii U games on here as well. Weirdly enough, uh, download hmm. codes for that. Uh, but this is to my mind, a pretty big deal because it's probably, uh, the most likely way that, uh, uh any, any Nintendo game will be sold for less than full price. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I looked at what they've got on there, and they don't have a whole heck of a lot going on on there right at the moment. But yeah. that's okay. Hopefully in the future there will be excitement. Like, this is just what's dropped onto it so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and right now, most of the stuff that I've seen is, you know, at the price that you would get by going onto the eShop. So, yeah. you know, uh, classic uh, NES games are $5, you know, on here. Like, they like they would be if you bought them on the system itself. But I think it's real interesting to see Nintendo uh, break out of their own ecosystem like this, which is not something they ever do. Mm -hmm. Well, and then also, like, the Switch has turned into this indie machine for me. Like, I can mm -hmm. get all kinds of indie games on the Switch, and I'm like, this is amazeballs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yay! Um, it, it surprised me a little bit, the amount of indie stuff you can get on there as well. But. Yeah. So this will be a way to uh, a, a way to get this here. Weirdly, it's U.S. only, so I don't know what yeah. I don't know what Nintendo's deal is with that. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I'll be watching for those discounts. I'll be looking for like the humble Nintendo humble Nintendo bundle. Yeah, for sure. When it comes, yeah. Um, any thoughts on that, Ben? Uh, no, that's sweet. I, I second the idea of indie games coming out on the Switch. Uh, I noticed that Pipe Push Paradise actually just came out on the Switch recently as well. Filthy. So. Filthy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Jella, why don't we go over to your story? I'm interested to hear sure. what this is. Yeah, so Rainbow Arcade is the new exhibition that's opening up in Berlin. And as the name implies, it covers LGBTQIA gaming history. Uh, everything from Birdo. Uh, to the recent Radiator trilogy, which I didn't know about, but it mm -hmm. features an autoerotic, um, you know, kind of game that is about pleasuring a gay car. Uh, <laughs> so that's why you I said autoerotic. There we go. <laughs> yeah, autoerotic. That, yeah, that's uh -huh. uh, Radiator Yang. Uh huh. It, yeah. I, yeah. I think we covered. He did like three games like this, like yeah, he did. maybe a year yeah, or two the, ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a trilogy. I I did not I was not aware of that. That flew under my radar. Yeah, so it, I, I mean, I, like I, I was aware of like the dating sims where you can date tanks or something like that or whatever other yeah. random stuff there was. Uh, I did not know about this in particular, but now now I do. I have been <laughs> educated. Yeah. So uh, was was that the one that was like stick shift where you had to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not being crass. I, that's my recollection. Yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, that's a legitimate thing that happens. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, anyway, getting back to the show though, uh, rainbow arcade. So the show itself is set up like a giant rainbow with each of the colors being a different section hmm. that covers the last 33 years through fan art memorabilia and video interviews with devs and even some playable titles such as caper in the Castro, which was one of the first explicitly queer games that mm. came out in 1989. It's a Mac and game, that like black game, and white. Yeah. That game, you are in San Francisco and you play as a lesbian detective named tracker McDyke. Okay. And, <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. And you're investigating the disappearance of your friend, drag queen tessie la femme okay uh so i did on, i did not know about this but this is really cool um there is a website called the lgbtq video game archive mm -hmm. and 
pink. I just linked it. But um, yeah, that might be fun to pick something there for Duckstream possibly for next year. Oh, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, there is also um, an indie section in this exhibit with games like Queers in Love at the End of the World yeah, and an, Dominique, an game. Yeah. Dominique Pamplemousse. So uh, regarding the fan art, though, uh, one of the people of, who made the exhibit and everything were saying that uh, fans are capable of finding representation where it's not publicly acknowledged or where the developers hadn't thought about the implications of what they did. Yeah, shipping. So, yep, yeah. Well, shipping. But I mean, sometimes it's like really obvious that it's legitimately a thing but they don't explicitly say it yeah, so, yeah. i didn't mean to yeah. to, to reduce it yeah. but that's my like the my idea of like what yeah. a fandom it's a it's the most common thing that i encounter i guess oh yeah for sure yeah but anyway so yeah that's uh rainbow arcade it's a thing that's awesome and it's cool yeah the some of the photos of the uh of, of the installation are pretty cool too look yeah the, the photos that's why i linked uh the article again like a different article about it so you can see some of the uh images and the press release stuff so yeah. there was actually something that uh apparently was kickstarted hmm. even and there was a kickstarter about it so yeah yeah that rules yeah yeah it's, it's too bad it's on another continent <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like otherwise we could all go and and see yeah. it, but a know, level field it, trip, yeah. right? <laughs> well, I'd be like, I don't know, like I, I to Germany. <laughs> yes, uh, Ben, you're the only one who speaks German here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I would like a like a book about this. Like, a, like a book about you know queer history and games. Uh, that'd be neat. Um, they might even be doing that with that Kickstarter. Possibly, yeah. I don't know. You'll have to poke around. Pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I, I, I was happy to find that archive as well. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm kind of mousing around their uh their their, mm -hmm. their nav here. There's a bunch of stuff. Like they even have a list yeah. of uh, of mods for different games as well to like oh, add cool. same sex relationships and things into uh into big games. Like they've got stuff for uh you know Baldur's Gate and like a list of uh mods for Coder and Mass Effect and things like that. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Awesome. I don't know that I have an awful lot to add. I'm just happy to know about it. Yeah. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then you answer it. Jala, what did you ask the nice people? I asked the nice people, what was the worst game that you've ever completed and why did you finish it? <laughs> we're getting some good stuff in here yeah i'm already i'm already looking forward to it the image that you posted uh i i like it <laughs> quite a bit uh it is proctologist simulator 2013 which appears to be uh, like a real thing like there's a yeah. person um manipulating a prosthetic um rear end here uh-huh yeah i don't know why i'm suddenly like turning into a like a like a 40s housewife it's a prosthetic <laughs> rear end oh my <laughs> 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 that is that is a okay yeah um but, uh, it reminds me that there was an arcade game in japan that was like based around poking somebody's butt i think it was like 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 not oingo boingo or something like that japanese butt poke game incognito <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's that's like a thing that's like a, a thing that's yeah, a yeah. cultural deal over there like a kappa thing. Yeah, it's a bunga but... bunga, which I almost uh, which I almost didn't say because bunga bunga parties are what uh, Silvio Berlusconi called his orgies. Um, uh. I thought I mis misremembered that. Uh, I'll take us in here with Roop, who says, Ride to Hell Retribution on the PlayStation 3. I just had to see if the game is as bad as its legendary status as one of the worst games ever suggests. Have to say, it's one of the most painful games you can ever play. Everything in it is just awful and rushed. So uh, part of this is like, I just thought about it after I saw Roop's answer and I started thinking, I was like, you know, this might be like uh, creating abject suffering fodder to add to the giant list that you guys have of all the suggestions <laughs> that never end. Oh, of course. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize Ride to Hell came out on um, consoles. Like I'm looking at this, it's on PlayStation 3 and 360. I thought it was a, like a discredited uh, PC game that like you had to get on where sites. <laughs> Neat. Well, that's that's good to know. It's useful information. Thanks, Root. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ben, what does Ollie say? 
All he says, I got the game is no good in 1998 for my PS1 due to a mix up involving a magazine and my parents not understanding irony. Uh, it was uh, with Sensible Soccer 9697. Uh, the only game I had the time, uh, I, and I pushed through it to finish it. It's terrible. And then he linked and the he... video. Yeah. <sighs> so it's based on a on a French comic series. Um, I wonder, like, how, how much of that has to do with the fact that it kind of looks like is no good. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then, well, and then too, like from what I'm seeing, it looks like just like a. Well, at least the beginning, the beginning part looks like a knockoff of a lot of other games yeah so huh so this is the this is the continuation of ollie's ten thousand ten thousand hours <laughs> yeah huh i was not aware of that video game it looks <laughs> like claymation aladdin Ugh. yeah it's 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 weird because it just reminds me of a lot of other things that i've seen even though i haven't seen that in particular ever but yeah oof surprise yeah, the the frame rate on that is a nightmare. Um, yeah. I'm not normally like a frame rate guy, but it's super choppy. It looks hard to control. Um, Jella, what does Sam say? Sam says, I played through the entirety of Sprung on Nintendo DS after the clerk at a game store gave me a free copy just to get rid of it. I didn't. I don't think I've ever hated the characters in a dating sim more, and the game doesn't even have the decency to contain a bunch of graphic violence and or nudity. <laughs> the one good part about the game was that you could use pepper spray at any point in the game, usually <laughs> earning you a game over. The old <laughs> screenshot Let's Play that Slow Beef did of Sprung way back in the day gets a lot of mileage out of this. <laughs> Oh man, I was I was looking for a, for a list of all the characters in Sprung because I know there are some doozies. But uh, but yeah. Oh, and then it's funny because Greg replies and says, "I actually liked Sprung quite a bit. Maybe oh. I just like bad games." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I just I remember like that was infamous. We could never move any of that at GameStop. Um. When I when, when I worked there. <laughs> yeah. Dating sim. Uh, it was like a weird, like like a Western approach. Let me look here. No, it was developed by a Western. It was like Ubisoft. So uh, a strange, like Western big publisher approach to a dating sim on the DS. They, they were with half right. Pepper spray. Yeah, with, with, with and, pepper spray. Yeah. Well, and then Charlie also replies, uh, my only exposure to this is through the Let's Play and the writing was unintentionally extremely hilarious when, when coupled with a lot of facial expressions. I feel like it's not fun to play, but it was very fun to experience secondhand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Austin... Much like many of the things that uh, you play on Hexcrank, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that's a, it's it's a service, right? People yeah. say I, can't, I don't I don't want to play these games, but I'll watch you play them. Yep, I'm good with that. Okay, so continue. Yeah, <laughs> Austin says the worst game I ever finished was Bullet Storm, and I finished it only because my hatred for the main villain was so strong. I wanted to see how he died, <laughs> but oh no, they made him get away in a spaceship in order to make a sequel. So I played through one of the most lackluster shooters ever for nothing. Damn bad Duke Nukem. Damn bad Duke Nukem knockoff. Damn you. Um, <laughs> man, I, I like Bullet Storm. Like the writing is execrable. <laughs> like they're like it's it's super misogynistic and juvenile, but like a hyper score focused uh, shooter like that that is super unrealistic and arcadey. I'm down for it. Not to contradict you. Um <laughs> Everybody's got their own things, as we well know, Cole, between you and I. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Everybody's got their own tolerances <laughs> for different things, so uh, it is it is okay to like different games. Yeah, don't worry, Austin. That won't make it to air. I'll cut you. I'll cut yours out so you don't contradict me. It's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, ben, what does Lindsay say? Lindsay says, Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday on SNES. Uh, I finished it because even though it was a bad game, my parents were low on cash, and I wasn't ungrateful for it. Well, that's good. Nice. That's a good reason to play a game like that. Yeah, it is. Um, I wasn't aware that there was a spooky Porky Pig game. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to play it for Hex Spring. Uh, maybe. Oh, that, that does look <laughs> kind of spooky. It's like walking around in a haunted forest. Huh. Well, I did not know that existed. How do you know? <laughs> um, Jalo, what does David say? David says, some random 3D FPS shooter for the N64 I don't even remember the name of. Beat it because it was a rental, and if I didn't play my rentals enough, I wasn't allowed to get more in the future. Oh, okay. Yeah. Spend all your money before the end of the fiscal year so we get our budget again <laughs> next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I'm kind of curious what this would be because there are the usual suspects. You've got your uh, you've got your 007 and Perfect Dark, but those wouldn't be bad. Maybe Turok. Um, I don't know. But then you get down into like Hexen and Forsaken. Yeah, I'm curious. The world may never know. <laughs> uh, Jonathan says. I played and beat Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. <laughs> yes, that is the title. I realized the game is pretty bad and only took around five months to whip uh, to whip up, uh, but it has some things that really speak to me. One, the game has unconventional mechanics, uh, such as your character giving you an idea of how many bullets you have left with a push of a button and being close to dying uh, is displayed through an opera track that plays and begins drowning out the game sounds. Two, I love weapons that are aesthetically pleasing, like the Luger handgun and Tommy gun with a cylindrical magazine. Uh, I should note that you can only hold a single gun at a time, which evokes some survival horror elements. And three, there's dinosaurs. What more could you want? Uh, yeah, like I remember playing that game a little bit. Like it's by no means great shakes, but the first person shooter segments are fun. The beat 'em up playing as Donkey Kong ones are a real bummer, a real bummer from a butt. I remember this was the game, like when achievements first came out, that this had like really easy achievements. So people who are trying to maximize their score would play this game, right? Yes, you would get the you would get all of the achievements by beating the main story, uh, and the game mm -hmm. is only like four or five hours long, something like that. I th yeah, I think this was a launch game too, and so that was that was a real big deal as well. Um, yeah, so it was like it was uh, King Kong and also the xbox avatar the last airbender game where there was just a, an option in the menu i think or effectively there was an option in the menu that just gave you a thousand points because <laughs> microsoft had mandated you needed a thousand gamer score within each game yeah <laughs> yeah um let's see ben what does jack say Jack says, uh, I don't want to throw shade at the entire genre of walking simulators, but finishing Everybody's Gone to Rapture was pretty painful. Uh, I finished it mostly because I knew I w it wasn't terribly long, and I felt compelled to arm myself with the knowledge that it wasn't good, uh, because I had heard some pretty loud raving about it from some friends and other online sources. I don't know. I like walking simulators quite a bit. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture isn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, uh, no, no shade. No, I don't worry about that at all. <laughs> no contradictions. <laughs> Dave is not on air, so he can't go. Yeah, so walking simulators. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Jala, what does Greg say? Greg says, Star Control 3. For the record, I don't think it's a horrible game. I'd rank it solidly in the meh category. But as the sequel to The Amazing Star Control 2, one of the best games, period, it had big shoes to fill and came in woefully short. By the way, Cole, have you played Star Control Origins yet? No, and I think I wouldn't be able to because they pulled it from sale. Oh. Yeah, because of legal, uh, just uh, like weird. <laughs> uh, a good case study for the difference between trademark and copyright. Mm. One, uh, Starduck got the trademark, but not the copyright, so they couldn't have all. They couldn't have any of the characters, uh, or subject matter, or races, or any of like the uh, kind of content of the game. Whereas the original developers got the copyright, but not the trademark, so they can't call their new <laughs> game Star Control. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the original company uh, sued Starduck, and it got pulled down uh, from stores. So who knows? It might just be a lost game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I never played Star Control Three. Uh, just because of its <laughs> reputation. Oh, well. Uh, Christopher says, probably spiritual warfare for the NES. I mean, it's not terrible because it's a Zelda ripoff and you get to throw various fruits at heathens. Uh, actually, never mind. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, but still probably the worst I actually bothered to keep playing to the end. Yeah, spiritual, spiritual. warfare is kind of a per perennial suggestion on AS. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, ben, what does Alexander say? Alexander says, I beat the SFC Dragon Ball Z JRPG. Uh, what is SFC? Street Fighter? Super Famicom? Oh, okay. Uh, he says, I beat that in high school. Uh, in Japanese. A semi-impressive feat for somebody who doesn't read uh, Hiragana or, or, or Katakana. Or, 
but that game is objectively garbage. <laughs> I was just at the age uh, where you're desperate for more of your thing. Dragon mm-hmm. Ball was my thing. Yeah, I mean, that's why I played uh, Dragon Ball Ultimate Battle 22. I played the Slayers RPG for, for the Super Famicom as well. Mm. So And the Violinist of Hamlin action game. That was actually pretty fun. <laughs> and then also the Slayers RPG that was on Sega Saturn. Hmm. I like Slayers. <laughs> uh, Slayers, I'm not familiar with, with, with what that it's is. It's an anime series. So. Okay. Like Vampire Slayer kind of thing? or No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's my one Bullshit. guess i use my i use my one chance <laughs> you you used it it's uh, gone oh well um uh, let's see here uh michael says i played and beat the ps1 the grinch game oh michael oh no um it had all the powers of ps1 ugly graphics over compressed voice lines and mascot platforming slash collectathon but my sister inexplicably inexplicably loved that game so i kept playing it so she could watch okay that's a redemption i should i should read the whole thing before i react to it <laughs> <laughs> that was very sweet of you to take that bullet for your little sister <laughs> yeah uh, and then finally here ben was what does charlie say Charlie says Proctologist Simulator 2013 was vastly inferior to Proctology Sim 2010. Yeah. Uh, actual answer: X Blades, an awful hack and slash with awful character design. Seriously, look at the cover art. Uh, I'm very sure the only reason I finished it is because this was still barely the era of game rentals, and I didn't want to waste something I picked up. I think I was uh, expecting something like Heavenly Sword. Even pl- paying the rental fee on it was too much, honestly. <laughs> um let's see here uh the x-blades uh i i, I most uh kind of like it's most notable to me because when it came to america there was a minor controversy over the fact that they censored the cover art so if you go and take a look um outside of the u.s the main character who is a shapely anime lady um she's facing away and she's got a good deal of underbutt uh sh- showing and in the american cover art uh they uh they they, they cover her up so yeah <laughs> that 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 probably speaks to it it's a like a like blood rain almost like it's a game that ex- that exists uh solely for titillation there's one more is there um yes. i didn't uh, I, I didn't see it or don't see it can refresh you read it? uh i can do it yeah i can do ahead. it james james says sonic adventure 2 on a recent replay not even for the content it's just a buggy nightmare the whole time i played it my only thought was that high pitch squeal movies uh that that high pitch squeal movies use when a character is temporarily deafened yeah i i remember like i wanted to get through to the end of that game but even on the dreamcast back in the day it was incredibly finicky like whether or not you would just fall through a platform or fall through a rail that you were trying to grind on yeah that's very frustrating that's like one of the most unforgivable bugs is when you fall through the map and like have to restart yeah yeah it was just like you know the the collision map didn't match with the with the visible geometry it was a real bummer yeah (laughs) Um, I think I told you guys about I was in the um, beginning, just like the little tutorial area of First Sniper Elite 2, mm-hmm. and I broke it, and I fell through the geometry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the very beginning of the game, I already broke it. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Um, let's do ours. So mine okay. is Beyond the Beyond, and my answer for that is Final Fantasy VII. It hadn't come out yet, but I wanted <laughs> to play a PlayStation a JRPG so I borrowed a friend, borrowed a friend's PlayStation and their copy of Beyond the Beyond, and beat it over the course of like a long weekend or something. <laughs> um, yeah, that's mine. How about you, Ben? Well, since you said Beyond, that reminded me I played and beat Beyond Two Souls. Oh that's yeah, cl- no. that might be my answer. I was originally <laughs> going to say Star Wars: The Force Unleashed, but I think I'll go with Beyond Two Souls. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty unassailable. I did it too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that that was i mean about when the shine came off of the apple for david cage for me because like i was riding high on kind of the memory of have heavy rain being good yeah yeah well i had buried that memory thanks for, <laughs> thanks for <laughs> <coming out. laughs> years of therapy undone <laughs> um how about you jolly you're gonna be surprised by my answer because it's not gonna be what you think it is 
I'm going to say d and I have the holder on the Game Boy Advance. Oh, dang. Yeah, that's I, the one you suggested for AS, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are like, I don't understand why you think that it's a bad game. Okay. So I played and loved the Sega CD version of it with its cheesy voice acting and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like the puzzles and everything were really good. And the, the Sega CD version, I know it was like remade several times because it was originally on the SNES and uh, was ported to Sega CD. And then um, it was remade on the GBA. But boy... Uh, that game just is stripped down and just like compared to what I had played and played and played and played on the Sega CD, it was crap, but I had already paid good money to buy it Mm -hmm. right when it first came out because I was like, hooray, I get to play this game again. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm sorely disappointed. There's like none of the stuff that made that game good on the Sega CD. (laughs) This is just plain Jane, boring, under animated, just mostly numbers and yeah. flat. Like it, it wasn't interesting. It didn't have any of the, you know, interesting looking, um, you know, enemies or, you know, the, the kinds of points where you're in a dungeon and you're going around a corner and you're hearing like the shit somewhere in the dungeon close to you and you don't know where it is, but you can you recognize by the sound that it's the monster that kills you. <laughs> yeah. And like there's no puzzles and none of that stuff that like made it really cool. Mm-hmm. Like none of that was there. So like for me it's mostly comparison. I guess if I only had just the one thing it would be different and I would be like at least, you know, less upset about it. But yeah. In that particular case, I was just drastically disappointed because I know that they had capacity on the GBA to do more than what they did, mm-hmm. you know, and it was just like not not really much effort on the developer's part to do no. much with it. So that's why I say that um, I would not say VLR and I would not say um, what was the other game. Oh, Corpse Party Blood Drive. I would no. not say one of those two, uh, mostly because I was like there were parts of Corpse Party Blood Drive and parts of VLR that I actually did like, and mm-hmm. like I still have the third, um, you know, Zero Escape game to play yet, and I am going to be playing it at some point, not mm-hmm. right now, but sometime I will play it. Yeah. Um, you know, so I mean, like that's a thing, but like I still wouldn't even qualify one of those as being like the worst game I've ever played. Yeah. So. I mean, like, I don't typically if it is that bad of a game, I will put it down and not play it. Oh, especially nowadays. Only, cut bait. Yeah. 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 And like at that time with I the Beholder, it's not even that I would necessarily say it's the worst game of all time that I've ever played. It's the worst one that I beat Yeah, because I don't have a tendency of beating a lot of games that I absolutely hate. Like there has to be something there that I like yeah. to keep going, except in that case, that was before digital things you know, digital um, <laughs> before stuff the like flood. Steam or, yeah, before any of that stuff came out. And so it's like, no, I paid good money to buy this game right when it came out. And I was so excited. And then I was very disappointed. So yeah. but I still played it because I was like, damn it, I spent all that money. Yeah. So. I, I mean, I mean, especially just in relation to your expectation, like a bad port or a bad update or yeah, that's totally understandable. I, th- I think our bafflement at it being suggested to Abject Suffering was because neither of us had that Sega CD experience. I think Gary yeah. played the gold box version of that on the PC. I hadn't played any of it. And to us, it just kind of looked like a tactic, like a like a kind of bare bones tactical RPG with with uh, with D&D rule set, which like, I don't know, sign me up. <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah and, see, yeah. and see, like that, I think that's the thing is that it was just so bare bones and it didn't have that kind of sense of of. Uh, actual adventure that I got when I was playing the Sega CD version. I don't know about like the PC version. I'm I'm assuming that would probably be like the the Sega CD one, but yeah. Um, you know the the voice acting was so crappy, <laughs> and it's not like I'm saying it was well written or anything, but like the game itself was really fun to play, yeah. and the puzzles were fun to play, and you felt accomplished every time you managed to get survive a battle that was really hard or you know run away from the enemy long enough mm-hmm. to, to recuperate or whatever yeah. you were doing it just wasn't and, it know, wasn't the genre you were looking for <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a dungeon crawler yeah. it was like something else and it was real basic and it was like wow this is not what i signed up for <laughs> yeah. so yeah well, thank you, everybody, for writing in with your answers. The next episode is going to be a free play multiplayer uh, because it'll be 270. Um, uh, if you want to participate in these, go to facebook.com slash the level podcast 
and look for the prompts to go up on Monday afternoons. Thanks to Jala. Thank you. Oh, by the way, when are we mentioning uh, title of the year stuff at the end? Yeah, let, 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 okay. uh, let's let's save that for the end. Uh, okay. Holidays okay. just got 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 weird. We're we're, we're still in the yeah. air, but now we're not. T sting yeah. stinger. Uh, the grind. Now it is time for the grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the past uh, period of time or so. I'm going to go first because I don't have very much. I've been, <laughs> I left the Baldur's Gate two mines and went right to the Final Fantasy ten mines, but we've got a little bit of a, a uh, little bit of a stopover because I used some of my Christmas um, uh, gifts, you know, gift, gift cards and such, to get a PlayStation VR. Oh yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, now there are two of them. <laughs> two, 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 mm -hmm. two of them on the show. They had mm -hmm. they, they had they had a sale, um, you know, just like a, a holiday bundle, and it was like down to the point where uh, I don't know the, the 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 my curiosity overrode my uh, kind of unwillingness to spend money on something extravagant. Um, however, it's really neat. So uh, I mean, Dennis has talked about it quite a bit. I was surprised at how easy it is to hook up. Um, it is a very surreal kind of thing to be standing in a room and like see your controller represented in VR or your, uh, your hands moving around. Mm -hmm. It's like the community thing, like to calibrate the system, stare at your hands and wonder. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was very much that kind of thing. I was initially put off by the, uh, the, the resolution on the headset a little bit. And also, uh, <laughs> this is this is super this is super strange because my glasses and the uh the headset will fog up uh you know just by being on there uh like i have to pre i have to preheat the uh the visor by putting it on my head for a little bit so the temperature differential doesn't cause the thing but like once you work that out it's super neat to pop on uh so i fucked around with a lot of the uh demo stuff like job simulator uh res infinite um, mm -hmm. all of that is, uh, super cool. The two main things that I have been digging into one, um, is Tetris effect and two is beat saber, which is one of the games that I got, that I got with the bundle. Uh, which of those would you like me to talk about first? I'm curious about beat saber, but yeah, I was going to say beat saber. Yeah, uh, Beat Saber is really cool, you guys. So Beat Saber is a rhythm game, um, and you have you have your two move controllers, right? And in game, they like they're lightsabers, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, music plays, and because it's a rhythm game, you have these blocks that are approaching you, um, and these blocks they have different colors, so they're red and blue, and they have a direction that you need to slice uh, to slice them in. And it designates which of your sabers you need to uh, hit him with. So you can do crossovers and stuff like that. Um, it's really convincing, like the force feedback on it. Like if you take the beams and touch them with each other, like both of them will vibrate. So it like the, the, the illusion is pretty good that you are in a virtual world holding onto these lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that's super dorky, uh, but I don't know. I was way into it. The music, sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, music, then, the music is really good, too. Uh, there are also blocks that you need to, like, move your head so you can move your character to get past them. And the overall effect is you are doing a kind of dance. <laughs> I, like, Ooh. it wasn't until, like, I took it off and just kind of, like, analyzed what I was doing, hitting, like, move, moving my, uh, uh, lights, my lightsabers and moving my head and my body to a rhythm. I pulled it off, like, oh, that was a dance. It probably looks super goofy. I wasn't self-conscious at the time. Which I think, I, I think speaks to the game's credit. <laughs> weirdly enough, that like, oh, it was like so immersive, and the music was so good, um, and the mechanics were so kind of tight that I don't know, like it got me to put that aside. Uh, you know, any self consciousness I might have had if somebody was in the room, I would have been uh, mortified. <laughs> but it's super fun and like just the right level of challenging. So, are you going to stream it then? God no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, any questions about Beat Saber? How, yeah. So, like, how does it compare to, like, Guitar Hero? Like, is it a similar type of zen that you get into when you're playing it? Or I don't know about that. So, Guitar Hero and Rock Band, for me, um, I kind of give over to the dorky fantasy that I'm making the music as I play it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is very much about, like, sensing the melody or sensing the rhythm and going into it. Um, and that's where my 
trance comes from and that's where my enjoyment of that game comes from this mm-hmm. is kind of more along the lines of like a theater rhythm um or like just like a dancing game like i never got too heavy into ddr um but it's you know you are kind of going along with it as opposed to having the sense of creating it i've not played a high enough level to feel like i am executing anything of like extreme <laughs> that involves extreme dexterity or endurance Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, it, it's neat. It's, it's, it's like, like, like res or something like that, where it's, okay. you know, like a participatory, uh, kind of thing mm-hmm. participating with the music and the visual. It, yeah, it looks sweet. Yeah. It's great. Like I, I, I got, I got that as opposed to like another bundle because the other bundle didn't come with move controllers. Like I didn't, I didn't really know what beat saber was, but I fired it up and I was like, Oh, this is, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> so um way into it tetris effect um, is great too uh yeah you know, i've talked a lot about tetris in the past i love tetris um tetris effect is for people who are not uh familiar with it it is a uh a, you know a kind of a bare bones esque tetris game made by the uh the guy who did res i don't know his name off the top of my uh, off the top of my head but res medios lumines uh child of eden things like that um and what this is it is you're playing tetris and in vr you are and i guess on the screen as well um, it is making music as you play Tetris and adding in kind of this visualizer effect. Uh, it's not strictly a visualizer because the, you know, like the music happens and responds to how well you are doing in the game. Um, and after a certain point, the music picks up and takes over and it starts dictating the pace at which the, uh, the blocks fall. So like mm-hmm. if, you know, if something gets to a drop or a break and it really speeds up, uh, you will have to deal with that for those bars while it's going there. And the idea is, you know, kind of that developer's whole MO, which is uh, a a synthesis between visual sound and play uh, that is super immersive. You really lose yourself in it. Like, it seems goofy to talk about how well Tetris works in VR because... I know it's a it's a translucent Tetris board that's right in front of you, but there are twisting galaxies and desert scenes and stuff playing out around it. Uh, and in case you're wondering, yes, I was on edibles a lot of the time while I was playing this <laughs> over the holiday. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's like the game developers are like, "How can we make this awesome VR experience?" Oh yeah, and then let's just add Tetris on top of it. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's super good. And it gets to be a really, you know, challenging Tetris game because of that variable uh, tempo kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Um, And like the one mechanic that it adds um, is this idea of like, I forget what it is, like groove or trance or something, something like that. It's a meter that you build up and you can um, activate that and everything gets kind of quiet and muted. The blocks stop falling automatically. But you can trigger them to fall like they're going to come in the same order they would have. They'll be randomized like they were. Um, And you're trying to clear as many lines during that as you can um, in order to maximize your score. So that's a way you get like good uh, you, you get good grades. Hmm. is to is to play with that system. It's a little bit like like think of it like uh, like overdrive in Guitar Hero or something like that, where it's a meter okay. you save up by doing good and then you can activate yeah, yeah. it to do better. So between the two games, it's like you've been playing Guitar Hero then. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's super great. Um, yeah, I, I I really dig this. I, I'm excited to go a little bit further in VR. I've played Resident Evil 7 too recently, I think, to jump right into that in VR. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pick up Daracene here pretty soon, the FromSoft game. That's like a weird successor to Echo Knight um that is vr only things like that um i'm excited and there's just like a bunch of a bunch of free games you can get like demos uh, and things mm-hmm. or like weird yeah. little vr experiences so i just like kind of like gruffled up a bunch of those and have been just kind of sampling around uh but i want to keep it a little bit limited uh to um you know beat saber and tetris effect mm-hmm. you gruffled them yes <laughs> Uh, any questions about Tetris Effect or final things about the uh, the PSVR? No. Yeah. Excited to see what you play next. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to, to dig into it more. Are you uh, going to stream VR in general, like some VR game? I need to find a way to do it. So the tricky part is uh, 
you know, it's easy to stream games when you don't have a huge visor on because yeah, I can just sit at my desk and have my microphone in front of me. Like I would need to get like a, like a lavalier mic or a lapel mic, uh, because you know, certain games, you know, require you to like look around and if I spin around, it gets kind of, you know, it, it creates problems. Gotcha. But, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that um so i'll i'll try to figure something out because there is you know good fun horror stuff and i think that might be fun if i did stream it it would not have a camera on me with my dumb face with a with the Why goggles not? on uh because i'm <laughs> self-conscious and i don't want that to happen <laughs> but um but yeah uh, like i would do the uh the, like the social view that 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 is super easy to do um mm -hmm. you know just with the with the output on the psvr Mm. yeah speaking of streaming i streamed parasite eve over the uh over the holiday weekend that was you fun sure did yeah uh boy that game falls apart at the end and the and pseudoscience is even funnier than i remembered it being mitochondria has lost all meaning <laughs> it's like a, it's a mitochondria and Picross uh yes. lost all meaning for jala <laughs> so uh but yeah i don't know how much more i can say about that game uh that i haven't said before except it is a super interesting evolutionary dead end for square that uh it kind of rose to be more than the tech demo i think that it ultimately was intended to be yeah yeah <laughs> sorry i don't have anything to say but i was in there yeah i watched some of it <laughs> the end oh ben what you been playing yeah, I got a couple of things. Uh, on the board game front, uh, we played one game together. It was uh, Time Stories, and then it was uh, for Macy, right? It, it was it was like the like the Macy case, the Macy Stories. Or yeah, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. Um, that was really fun. Uh, it was uh, better than the Dragons one, and I think it was debated on whether or not it's better than the uh, base game that we played. Yeah. Uh, so, so the, like the uh, Marcy, it was Marcy, not Macy. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I I I I just, I just remember that. Um my my contention that it will that it was not as good as the module that comes with it, the uh the Lovecraft Asylum one, mm -hmm. mostly because the Lovecraft one had a really cool meta puzzle that was used to yeah, solve to, to, to solve the end of it. Uh that's true. the Marcy one is definitely better than the D D one. That sounds like uh faint praise because the D D one was real bad. But yeah. the Marcy one had some really interesting Really interesting uh, play gambits, I guess, um, that paid off in a way that uh, uh, was unexpected, except for, and this is a spoiler for the end, it comes down to a one in four chance that you, that yeah. you did it right. It, in our case, it happened to come down into a one in four, one in five chance, mm -hmm. and we happened to pick correctly, so we had a good ending, but yeah. that's a little bit questionable of a game design decision. But A little bit, yeah. <laughs> but who knows who knows how other people's games go. Um and then the fun surprise too is that the storyline in general of the game is ripped right out of Resident Evil 2 it seems so <laughs> as well as some of the artwork. So that was a little bit weird. Uh, it's it's um, shameless. Like you get to the lab of, of the uh of the evil corporation that is doing bio biological experiments and it's just an umbrella except instead of being a top-down view it's a side view. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's even like red and white. It is mm -hmm. um, as shameless. I already I already used the best word for it. Sorry, guys. It seems legally actionable, in <laughs> fact. But uh, oh well, we'll just brush that aside. Yeah. Um, other board game I played over break was this game called Mansions of Madness. I played this with uh, Dennis and his family, uh, it, which is also my family. Yeah. Um, it was it was really awesome. It was like um, it was almost like a D and D campaign, but there's like a board game component to it, kind mm -hmm. of. Like there's an app that like kind of takes into account where your figures are and like what they've done, and kind of can react to it. Hmm. Um, and so when we were playing, we were playing with uh, I think six people, and Dennis was the DM for it. So like he w was controlling the app and was saying like, "There's a monster that jumped through this window. How are you going to react?" And then you have to either like fight or run and do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. Um, definitely seems like the future of board games might be this type of thing where it's like a hybrid of having an app that has this brain that's controlling everything, but you have mm -hmm. a bunch of like modules that you can use and kind of get a good visualization of what's going on. Yeah. But the, the, yeah. is this the one with madness effects that people can't talk about? Like, like yes. weird little mutators that are placed on your behavior at the table. Yes. So, uh, it's kind of like Cthulhu influenced, um, if you see enough crazy stuff, you get these like uh, like insanity cards or whatever, 
And if you get enough of them, it triggers uh, like you to go insane. And so mm -hmm. then as soon as that happens, you're given a new game objective. And then that's what you have to complete to try and win the game. Yeah. Uh, and it, it might be like on top of what the group's doing or it might be against what the group is doing. Um, so one of them and one of them like uh, it can have like permanent effects on the game. So like one is like you can't speak anymore. Like as soon as you get mad, you cannot say anything for the rest of the game. <laughs> uh, and you just have to do your own thing from that point on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was a lot of fun too. I think we had all but one of our people go mad, but then only one or two people lost in our group. So mm. it was, you know, a mixed bag. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Besides all the board game stuff, uh, got some stuff on the video game front, uh, especially with like Christmas uh, gifts and stuff. Uh, I've continued, uh, I got Super Smash Brothers Ultimate uh, for Christmas. Um, and so I've been playing through that. Uh, I've unlocked a bunch of characters and that's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, yeah, uh, I'm still playing that with uh, friends as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, it it works a lot better than I expected. Uh, I thought there was going to be problems with like using the uh, the the two like switch controllers instead of like a GameCube controller, mm -hmm. but I think it works. I think it works fine. You can theoretically just use a single uh, Joy-Con. That's pretty rough. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, yeah, you you technically have everything you need to do all your moves, except for taunts, I think. But I don't know. Um, not a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still like you're holding onto a tiny Joy-Con. Like that is that is a real tough bargain, I think. Yeah, it's tough to kind of like have the accuracy that you t need for that type of twitchy game. Um, yeah. And also the the on the single Joy-Con, it's really hard to do the bubble, like the R and L, and have that react the way that you would normally do, want it to react. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Bubble, anyway, bubbles uh, are grabs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, but I was surprised uh, playing it just like on your own. If you just have like the screen and the Joy Cons attached to it, it's perfectly fine. Oh yeah, so, like that's yeah. how I play it. Yeah, I, so I was, I was happy about that. I thought it would be more difficult. Do you have uh, a character that you've gra gravitated toward, like a new one? Um, uh, I, I don't know if I have like a main strictly. Some of the ones that I like, I like uh, Cloud. I like Wii Fitness Trainer. Um, I don't know. Uh, Duck Hunt still fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, when we, uh, I played yesterday with some friends, uh, and basically every game I would try and pick a new character. So yeah. I haven't really settled on one, but definitely I, I would say one of my stronger ones is Cloud. Though he, he just seems like a really strong character. But yeah. um, <laughs> the, the the two yeah. so the, the three characters that wanted, that I wanted to play as Simon Belmont, Ovs, Cloud, and Bayonetta. I've only gotten one of them. And I am super pissed because the game seems yeah. to be specifically withholding the cool stuff from me. Yeah, it, mm. well, it sucks because whenever a new character approaches, it's like, okay, you've been playing these CPUs level six. How about a level nine one to unlock yeah, why this not? character? <laughs> it's like, oh, no. So you have to do like these really cheap things. Be like, all right, how can I spam moves to like pump damage into this person? And like, yeah. how can I geek <laughs> out when um, I, too, have not gotten Bayonetta? I fought and lost against her, and I was very sad about oh, that. Oh, man. Um, uh, same thing with Snake as well. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Snake's old news. I played him on the Wii. He was he was fine. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> He's real I still cool. Still want to be able to play him now, but yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Duck Hunt's up B is really weird. Like those are the recovery moves in Smash, and Duck Hunt just gives you the ability of flight for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No big deal. No big deal. Uh, I well, I love the uh, duck his neutral B, which is like he throws out a can, mm -hmm. and then at any time you can press B again, and someone shoots the can, and if mm -hmm. someone touches it, it explodes. Yeah, it's <laughs> so much fun in multiplayer because it's all right. I'll just set this down here, go fight on the other map, and then you just have one eye on where the can is. It's yeah. like oh, someone's going next to it. Oh, bam! You know? <laughs> it's so awesome that you that you leave a mine. Um, yeah. and like like I don't know, as as a kid, I loved playing Duck Hunt and also Hogan's Alley. That that's what that's from is the is the yeah. Hogan's Alley game. Uh, like, like another lesser known light gun game. So like you would shoot cans to try and keep them in the air. Or there was a scenario where it was like, okay, shoot the criminals, not the good, not the good people kind of, kind of yeah. deal. And that, that, that's the pixel dude who pops up in that. So like yeah, that's duck, your, duck hunt. Dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Duck Hunt is not just Duck Hunt. It's like a weird little historical tour of Nintendo Zapper games. <laughs> that's sweet. I didn't know that at all. No. And Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and the Splatoon people are really fun too with yeah. the paint mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, the basic pr premise of their move set is you can cover other people in paint, and then you do more damage towards them. Uh, so they have a kind of. What's really cool about the game in general is every 
every character is like pretty unique and they kind of have like their own strategy of like how to win. Um, I think it's more true with like the later characters, maybe even with the earlier characters, mm -hmm. like they have like, re they've done a good job of making like really unique movesets and really like unique strategies with like how and try and beat the other people. Um, so yeah, so I'm having a great time with that. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, I, it's a good party game. So if you ever get uh, friends over, it's like a great thing to fire up. So mm -hmm. Are you um, engaging at all with the single player like World of Light stuff? Or are you just yeah. rocking? Yeah, so I actually started that um, a day or two ago, and uh, I love the opening. I love how you, <laughs> how overwrought I, it is. <laughs> I love who your opening character is and the context of why you're playing that character. It's <laughs> yep. like that's great. That is that person. That's yeah, that's lovely. Um, yeah, that seems pretty fun. I haven't dug too deep into it yet. I maybe pussed around in it for like a half an hour, an hour or so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Um, but in effort of time, I want to get to the next game real quick. Uh, the other games that I've been playing have been all been PC games. Uh, mm -hmm. and so the first one is I got Stellaris as a gift, uh, on Steam. Uh oh, we uh, found a Ben hole. <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry. Don't worry. I, I put my safety on. I'm like holding the edges so I don't fall in the hole. Um, <laughs> Uh, thankfully, over, I had time over, you know, I spent like two days playing it over winter break and I didn't have anything else to do. Um, but, I'm I'm good. Like, we're, it's okay. You sure? We don't need intervention. Okay. Um. So it, it's a it's a grand strategy game. I think is what they call it. Yeah. Uh, it's paradox. It's like a four X, but with extra like civilization management stuff on top of it. Right. Yeah. It's basically like space civilization. Uh huh. Is the way you can think of it. Um. It feels very akin to like Age of Empires. Like it feels very similar to that, where it's like you're doing a lot of managing of bunch of different things to try and get resources and control your borders and then you eventually are spreading out and you have to like fight other people you know it has like a very similar feel as that type of game uh, what's nuts is like the the size of the board and like the size of the number of races is like so huge i played on the absolute lowest setting i could and yeah. it's still a significantly large game yeah um uh yeah i don't know it's a fun game i i've only played i think two games and i've only gotten like i'm maybe like halfway through or so and the games have been mostly like learning the mechanics it has a high learning curve like you need to go watch youtube videos before you can play this game yeah because they just dump you in and they have you they have like a uh, paperclip type assistant or whatever mm -hmm. to try and like guide you through a little bit uh, but even then like you you don't know how to play the game when you just start up the game which yeah. is like weird <laughs> it's weird that that they made it like that you know like at least with like age of empires they had like a campaign that you can kind of go through to figure out the uh, mechanics like one by one yeah i didn't i didn't see anything like that in this game so there's like a lot of googling you have to do to be like all right how do i like mine this resource or like how do i do diplomacy with these other people you know like once yeah. you start butting into other people um that's uh, that's paradox's jam you know yeah to hide the uh, rules of the game from you yeah they did the uh, same thing with with crusader kings and because this is okay. uh crusader kings in space or crusader Kleep Norts, um you know <laughs> like it holds true like, that they would yeah. do that again i i do the mechanics are sweet though like there's a lot of like uh cool things you can do you can make your own race from the get-go um and there's like a lot of different things that you can play around with like yeah. uh you can make a lot of like creative type strategy races so like you can make one, you can pick, you pick all the attributes of your race. And it's like one of these things where it's like, there's negative ones and positive ones and you have to pick five. And then the total has to be plus two. So you yeah. can pick like a sweet, you know, plus eight type thing, but you have to take like a minus a couple minus fours or something like that. Um, that specifically uh, is really reminiscent of like master of Orion where like you could, okay. you know, like the, there were races that came out of the box, but you could pick their traits. And like, if you chose the, the, the trait Silicon based, you know, you were rock people, uh, and you mm -hmm. could like inhabit more, more planets and stuff like that. Yeah. But everybody hated you because you were so alien. Uh, yeah. so it was like yeah. a huge social hit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the type of thing you can affect in this one. Right. Uh, so have ability of planets is a trait either, either in a good way or a bad way. You can pick either one of those, mm -hmm. um, how likable you are to other people. You can pick either, either one of those as like a trait. Um, you can pick, uh, one thing that's interesting is you have like leaders, like who run your government. So you have a single leader who runs your government, but then you have these like science leaders who are running your like, uh, explorer ships when you're like searching new galaxies and stuff. And, uh, you can pick traits based on their lifespan, whether they like are, you know, like a race that's, uh, that's fleeting and they only like have a lifespan of like maybe 20 or 30 years or they're like venerable and they have like a lifespan of like 80 or a hundred years. Yeah. Um, so there's like a lot of cool mechanics and a lot of cool like uh, strategies that you can kind of play. 
um, it seems. Yeah. Uh, so I again, I've only played two games of this, and even then, like I haven't finished either. There's one I got to a certain point, and then I got wrecked because I figured out how combat worked. Um, <laughs> and, and then the second one, I put like dumb AI, few people, smallest map or whatever, and like uh, I got to the point where I'm I'm definitely like the biggest person in the galaxy, so it's like clear that I will win it. But then I have to spend like another like six or eight hours if I want to actually win the game, and it's like I don't want to do that. So. Yeah. Um, so I might play around with it some more. Um, it, you know, it's a sweet looking game. It's just one of those things where it's like, I don't want to spend an entire day playing a single game. Yeah. So, and it's crossed uh, that paradox threshold for me. Like it came out and it was just the base game and that looked like too much. And mm-hmm. now there's a whole bunch of, uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of, uh, expansions for it too. Okay. Which raised the barrier of entry to me as well. So I'm excited to, I'm excited to know somebody who has the patience, <laughs> <laughs> to kind of get through that probably yeah no it's i mean yeah as a, sweet mechanics like it seems really cool i just wish there was a way for it to be like a bite-sized game to be fair to their credit uh mm-hmm. w- they do have like a timer on the game so like the idea is you can control the game speed if you want hmm. um so you could just set it to the fastest like time if you wanted to if you wanted to try and blow through it the problem is is like you're kind of at a disadvantage then because your your reaction time is like a little bit less if you're playing out of that speed yeah. so a lot of times you can kind of toggle if like there's nothing going on. You can set the fastest speed, or you can like pause it if you need to like set up a bunch of commands at once. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it. I mean, it looks like a really cool game. Uh, I don't know how much I'll play it, but it's it's definitely respectable. If you're looking for something like an Age of Empires game, then that's that's totally for you. Then um, yeah. Uh, all right, I got two more games. Uh, the other game is I finished uh, Pipe Push Paradise. Uh, Filthy. I, I know. Sorry. I was going to not say this if Dennis was on the air, but since he's not, I'll just say uh, there's like two endings after the regular game, which I didn't know about until I beat the game. Uh-huh. Um, or there's like two more additional maps that they like added on after the game was released. OK, so it's like two different patches because people like like the game and stuff. Um, and one of them introduces new mechanics, like a new puzzle solving mechanic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other one's just kind of like challenge maps. Yeah. Um, but they're really like satisfying puzzles for you know like the first island the second one's really cool too like showing a new mechanic uh i was able to beat that one without like looking up anything i was able to figure out stuff the one with the really challenging one two of them i had to look up the answers to and one of them i feel particularly salty about because it's a a mechanic that is only used in this puzzle and it does not like there's no point where they teach you that that's a mechanic Mm. Uh, it's like an interaction with some of the pipes with how you roll them i guess um yeah whatever um but yeah, that was a really charming game. Uh, I'm kind of bummed that there's no more content for it, uh, but that is an awesome puzzle game. So I I highly re- recommend that. Um, I'd say it's any. I I like it even better than Steven Sausage Roll because like I think it's kind of like a simpler, less painful version of that game, hmm. um, but still has like complexity with like the puzzle design. So yeah, um, yeah I really liked it. Uh, good. Probably not the best game to stream since you're just sitting there like looking like an idiot for like 20 minutes and then you get something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Cool. Um, all right. Last game I got is I picked up Hollow Knight on the Steam sale. Oh, dang. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Uh, I've so put about I put about nine or ten hours into it. Uh, I'm very proud of myself because I know it's supposed to be like a Souls-like type thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I know you're supposed to get frustrated with it, but I've like not – stop playing it i guess so uh so i'm making progress uh you know i'm trying to be patient with it and trying to like keep trying and stuff like that i've explored like maybe four or five of the biomes or worlds that they have Mm -hmm. um and i've gotten i don't know i've probably gotten maybe like three thousand gens over the course of the entire game so far or three thousand points or whatever um story is like kind of whatever it's uh i think the art style is really strong the mechanics of like moving around and stuff is really cool Mm -hmm. um yeah, all, it, yeah, it's uh, yeah. The art style's great. The characters are great. So I don't. It's a fun game so far. Uh, I don't. I think the runtime of it. I thought it was like a short, like to beat. Time. No, it's pretty big. <laughs> all right. Yeah. How uh, do you know like how many biomes there are, or how many like areas there are by any chance? Uh, more than ten, but less than twenty, I think. Okay. All right. That gives me a good gauge then. Of yeah. Kind of how. Uh, okay. So there's a caveat to that, which is a lot of that has. Uh, <laughs> so uh, my, my information might be outdated. I played it back when it was 
I think just the base game and maybe one challenge area afterwards, they've okay. added new stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, it's, they've added, like, free uh, DLC or patches, right? Yes. Yeah, like, with That's just cool. the base game, you, you get, like, new playable characters and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so looking on how long to beat, like, it puts main and extras at 33 hours. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. Like, worth it. Like, it's an amazing game. Yeah, it's definitely fun. Um, you do get a little bit of satisfaction once you figure out how a boss works and being able to beat it. Mm-hmm. Um, it does give me the same sort of anxiety that Dark Souls did of, like, if you die and all your resources <laughs> go to one area. <laughs> right. Well, the, you, you die, all your resources become an enemy that fights you when you go to get them back. <laughs> yeah, but he, like, doesn't... He hardly ever does damage oh, you know. to you. It's a glor- <laughs> glorified pickup spot, but uh, yeah. but there's a lot of anxiety in, like, well, I can't die on my way to there now. No. Like, uh... Like there was one thing I was trying to save up money for that cost uh, eighteen hundred dollars or eighteen hundred whatever units are in that, uh, and so that was like affecting how I played the game in terms of yeah. like I'm not going to go explore this area because it looks too dangerous and I don't hundred percent know if I could get back there. Yeah, uh, it just it, like the, like that kind of game forces you to constantly pull risk and reward. Yeah, um, and one thing that's been funny too is it's I've just a strategy of all right i'm gonna attack this thing like immediately attacking something even if you don't know how it works like Mm -hmm. i haven't had another game that's like made me that aggressive before so i thought that that was interesting that i picked up that trait playing the game yeah Uh, but yeah i don't know it's been fun Uh, i do like the mechanics of like things like um if you're in the air and you swing downwards and hit something you can bounce up off of it so Mm -hmm. you can use that to kind of like juggle yourself or you can use it to like cheese and attack people yeah and they work that into platforming in really satisfying ways later um it's, yeah. it's like a zelda 2 style uh style deal i've reached uh one biome where that has an effect where yeah, yeah. um so yeah uh, <sighs> you need to stop talking about hollow knight because i just want to go play it uh, okay. you, you don't need to stop talking about hollow knight but <laughs> <laughs> what's funny is it, it would have been worse because i was looking at it and then i was like no i have too many other things i need to play right now i'm not going to get that one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It would have been worse. Yeah. I'm happy you like it, Ben. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes, how it progresses. I don't know if uh Yeah, I don't I don't know if the story has any payoff or anything like that or um I don't know. I got to the Hollow Knight statue. That yeah. sounded that was interesting, I guess. Yeah. No, the the, the the I I mean the story is good and affecting for, for, for what's there. It is a soul style thing where it's uh mostly about mostly about background uh, cues and things like that. You know, you are going to like a ruined civilization and walking around, uh, but yeah. holding its works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. Cool. Okay. That's all I got. All right. Jala, uh, how about you? Okay. Well, I'll start by saying I actually played a board game because well, I had yay! family in town over the holidays. So Neat. we played Escape the Room. Um, this is a series of, you know, room escape board game type things. Um, where basically you have a cue card that sets up the, you know, scenario and then you've got physical packets and you open up the first packet, like when it indicates, and then that has like physical pieces that you can use to puzzle through and, you know, figure out how to unlock this safe or do whatever. Like, you know, here's all the stuff, the contents of the room, you've got the safe, you've got this, um, combination lock thing over here and then you've got this desk and whatever and then like when you open this then you know you can progress from there that kind of a thing um it has it to where like basically as you open up each of the different packets as you progress through the game and unlock different things um sometimes some of the pieces from earlier that you picked up you know, are still in play. Like any of that stuff can be in play. I was told by my sister and brother-in-law that with the series, there was one point where they were playing one of these installments and um, part of the game box itself was in play for, you know, one of the, um, you know, puzzles that they had to solve. Neat. So, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. But uh, we were trying to play that when my niece and nephew, who are two and five, were like, you know, off in the side, you know, hoping that they wouldn't pitch a fit because this was past their bedtime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, and then, like, my mom was trying to stay up to play it with us because my sister really wanted all of us to play it. 
Um, and so like, you know, my mom was really tired. So it was kind of like a struggle for part of it, but it was kind of funny because my, um, niece who is five ended up helping puzzle together a couple of the, the, the different things. Cause you know, she can manipulate the pieces and stuff too. So she was messing with it and she solved a couple of the puzzles for us while we were doing <laughs> other stuff. That's awesome. So. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, fun for the whole family. And they even have like an online uh, hint thing where like you can pull up their website for hints, you know, like hit number one, a stronger hint, more, you know, an even stronger hint blatantly telling you what it is if you really need to use that. Nice. So um, they do have that aspect as well. But um Anyway, so that was a lot of fun. I uh, played like a, a room escape thing. And you will find this very funny. Um, I was talking to my sister about video games because uh, she's the reason I actually ended up ever getting Steam is because of her. And I actually got back into video games and playing with people because of my sister. So the reason I'm on this podcast. <laughs> nice. <laughs> is Tell her I said thank fault. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, she she had just finished playing. Uh, oh, what was it she played? I forgot. Anyway, we, we were talking about one game that we had both played and then um, she was interested. Oh, I think she played The Room and mm. she was interested. She had been told that she should try Danganronpa. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and here's why. Here's why. Because my sister is not into anime or anything like that. And knowing my sister the way that I do, I was like, no, 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 no. I don't I don't think that one would appeal to you as much as say you will like this uh 999 okay <laughs> nine yeah person's nine doors because she likes room escapes mm -hmm. and that's like some wacky you know bug nut stuff but it doesn't like i know if you think the characters chafe on me you don't even want to know like my oh, oh, oh she also played um doki doki literature club and she liked that one okay so she well, like she has tolerance for visual she novel has stuff a little yeah she has a tolerance for visual novel stuff she has a little bit of tolerance for anime stuff but not like the biggest tolerance for yeah, it so that's not infinite yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just like, I think you should try Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, because I think she'll dig the room escape part. Like her and her husband play room escapes all the time, mm -hmm. and, you know, she likes that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, did, so yeah, so I recommended that to her. Did, did so Do you know how it went over, or, or you, you no, get no to idea. report? She, she, no, she just, like, we were talking about it over the holidays, and she is now starting up another semester of school and she's also otherwise caring for the kiddos, trying mm -hmm. to get them back to school. So I don't know um, if she's picked it up just yet. I'm sure she'll tell me eventually when she does. So yeah. I will tell you when I know. Neat. But uh, on that note, so Escape the Room. Any questions about Escape the Room? No, I'm, I'm happy which, to hear that you have fun with them. Which campaign yeah. did you play when you played? Dr. Gravely's something. I don't, I don't know. Dr. <laughs> Gravely's whatever i don't know whatever one says dr gravely on it is the one that we played um he basically we got locked in some kind of health resort but it was like actually a place where he was conducting human experiments and we had to rescue some people and all kinds of stuff so that's sweet that there's like four different campaigns in the game as well yeah there's there's different things and yeah. then there's also like you can escape now or you can solve some extra puzzles and save this other person and get like the good ending you know so <laughs> so that's cool too. like there's also quote unquote alternate endings as well um so yeah i played that nice. um probably if they come back uh this year you know or whatever then we will probably play another one of those at some point but anyway uh second thing i finished danganronpa 2 okay so I think the last time that I talked about it, I was in chapter four. I don't remember exactly. I think I, I was like almost to the trial or something in chapter four. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and talk about like, um, you know, just generally how I feel about it to recap. And then like, I'll talk about a little bit ab abstractly about the ending. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll say that this game started really poorly and then it ramps up. Yes. And the original game, as as opposed to the original game, which started out okay, got really good and then petered out near the end for me and, like, started making me angrier and angrier <laughs> with the war of attrition against the boring – like, the trials got boring to me in that one Yeah. Um, at the end. And then the character I absolutely can't stand taking the forefront at the end of the game, mm -hmm. like – 
that just like who, made me who, so who, mad. Who, who and, was like, that in DR one? The villain. Oh right, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So uh this game started out pretty badly and incrementally got better and then it kind of like leveled off a little bit closer to the end but then at the end <laughs> it began ramping up again with yeah. some turns that it's okay but by the time the game stated what those turns were some of them had been really bleeding fucking obvious from the environmental clues yeah um so some of those turns because there are several of them were completely unforeseen though mm -hmm. and made me feel like oh snap your last trial actually is a, has a super severe consequence to yep. it right that's made oh it's got a consequence oh yeah. i actually started getting excited yeah All right but then then they brought back a character that i absolutely hate and they brought a bunch of them in from the front first game actually but the one that i have zero tolerance for from the first game that made me so mad oh. came over that one came over and then it became a big deal at the end of this game and pretty much wrecked the ending for me because very end of the game totally undoes that sensation of impact that it builds like two seconds before then it's like bomb hmm. drops bomb drops bomb drops never mind none of that stuff matters because power of humanity power of friendship bullshit and mm. so that made everything working out magically okay at the end of the game pissed me off so much. <laughs> I yeah. was mad all over again at this stupid game. Um, the ending of the game, however, did not make me want to throw my Vita because, one, I was kind of expecting it to do that shit anyway. Um, but then also the first game's ending um, just came across as way more irritating to me than this one did. Yeah. Like, I, I was already set up for this one before I got to it, right? Um <laughs> Mostly I was mad at this one for having so much potential, right, that it yeah. squanders. And I... so the writers can obviously set up some great plot twists and murder mysteries, but then there are sometimes these really boring trials and then these cop-outs to the genre tropes. Yeah. That just slay me. And I... that just slays me because I'm like, I know you can do better than this. Guys. <laughs> you just did better than this. You just yeah. did better than this. And then you just took it and threw it out the window. What is yeah. wrong with you? You know, so I, I was playing this game originally because there were things in the first game that I really liked and I wanted to see continue because I did like Danganronpa, the original game, for like the first half to two thirds of it. Mm -hmm. And then what I wanted was for this game to take and run with the potential. And because, you know, like everybody was like, this game is so much better. I was like, OK, maybe it'll get better and maybe it'll like at least end if, if it's going to end with some kind of a tropey thing. Maybe it'll like end on one that is decent, like all right. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Well, like well, was, one that you haven't seen a bunch before or one that is not like saccharine and bad. Yeah. And like this one was less bad than the first the way that the first one ended for me. Yeah. Um, but it still fumbled, you know. And so, like, when you find out who the kids on the island really are and where they are, it's great. Okay. Yeah. So the where they are thing was really obvious before you're told, and they sort of overdid it on the environmental storytelling, in my opinion, yeah. because it got really old by the time you were finally told the thing. Yeah. But uh, the, the, like also the, the 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 ways that they hinted though, like even though it's, it's so it's it's really weird to say that something that gives it away. Uh, it adds to the mystery, but like added to the overall sense of like prisoner like weirdness to it that it like like supremely worked for me. See, that didn't work out for me. I was just like, OK, I've seen this like five, I, you don't need to do this particular screen effect anymore. I fucking yeah. get it. Like, come on. We can move along now. <laughs> come on, hop along. You can fucking do it. You know, so. Um, the word despair, by the way, has to be added to Picross. And, <laughs> Picross, um, mitochondria, mitochondria, despair. Yeah, yeah. Mitochondria, Picross, despair. Yes. So um, anyway, a huge problem, a huge problem, all right, that's continuing from the first game that mm -hmm. for both of them, for all of them so far, is that other than the potential that gets dropped over and over again, is that the premise of the tragedy to begin with is pretty dumb, mm -hmm. all right? How the game says it comes about and who just magically happens to hold the power makes no sense. Hmm. The idea of the tragedy is a good one, but the trigger is piss poor. You can't tell me that this nutso character with absolutely like no charisma whatsoever at all can sway everybody in the world to be insane and depraved. That's just yeah. BS because a group, even a large group, sure, 
I mean, take current politics, for example, but the yeah. rest of the world is looking at it like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. So, you know, like, I, I can, I'm I not on board with that. I am not willing to abandon, you know. Like <laughs> you're a, a you're not willing to cede that ground. That. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not about to suspend disbelief on that, especially because, like, I have not seen anything from that particular character who is supposed to hold all of that power that makes me believe anybody would follow yeah. that character. So, uh, and and also, I maxed out my social link with Fuyuhiko, and mm-hmm. he gave me his underwear. And that's just real weird. I, I mean, yeah. Anyway, like, apparently that happens with any of the characters that you max out your social link with. You just get a whole fucking collection of everybody's underwear for no <laughs> reason. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. That, that, like, there's not even, like, any any logical explanation for why that happens like i mean like okay if this is if this is like a token of their affection in in their head and that works for them all right but like (laughs) unprompted just being handed the yakuza boys underwear is like what (laughs) What? (laughs) excuse me like (laughs) somebody would get punched if they ever handed me their underwear like out of the blue what is this you weird creep like what are you doing (laughs) so uh, anyway yeah uh, i settled on liking this game all right but i'm closer to the neutral side of the like scale thanks to all those issues that i've already mentioned about the tragedy the cop out at the end about some of those other things what i enjoy the stylization the music the soundtrack is like way better than it has any right oh it's so good Uh, it is it's great uh so some of the mechanics okay the free time interactions the social link stuff except for the underwear um the base trial mechanics the base mechanics although some of those mini games within the trial i really as i've said before i feel like they need to relate more to the actual actions and processes of a trial rather than just being here's hangman for no reason yeah yeah uh some of the plot twists and stuff those are things i like yeah what i don't like the insistence of falling into every trope hole on earth yeah. down the path and uh, catering to the lowest common denominator and not giving any credit to the gamer for any intelligence to be able to pick up anything. Uh, the lack of relevance of some of the elements like the Tamagotchi and some of those, you know, mini game trials. And then of course we've talked before about my tolerances of certain, um, you know, archetypes or things like that, that I've seen so much of that. I just don't have a tolerance for those particular archetypes or what have you. Mm -hmm. So all of that said though, uh, if the third game in the series is generally considered to be decent, I would not be opposed to playing it eventually, not right now, but like in a year or two years after a very long break and preferably having been given the game mm-hmm. or finding it on sale for dirt cheap because I would not expend over much in order to have mixed feelings again. However, <laughs> right. um, I I played this because, you know, so many people were like, this one's so much better. And yes, I agree. This the Danganronpa 2 is better than Danganronpa 1. Mm-hmm. I do settle on the like side of the scale. I do think it's a little bit better paced and everything once you get past the beginning part. Yeah. Um, still does some falling down, though, uh, which is unfortunate. But, you know, it yeah. is what it is. So um, I, 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 we're going to be real vague about this. What did you think of the last killing? I'm trying to remember the last killing. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put in <laughs> I'll, I'll put in some sensor here. See, I, I don't like what they did with uh, the main character and who the main character is. Mm-hmm. I think all of that is pretty flat. Yeah. And so um, the involvement with that sucks. Uh, now, like the way that they they had that last killing, you know, play out, that was tolerable, you know. Um, but there were a lot of other things going on that I didn't like that were surrounding that. So it didn't feel as gratifying to me or whatever, <laughs> you know, which is, I know what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, but like that, that did not feel as gratifying as I, yeah. as I would have otherwise felt about it. I'm happy that you got through about. to the end. I'm happy that you, you know, liked I played it consistently. What's that? I played it consistently. I didn't yeah. even set it down for a long time. I actually played it regularly until I finished it. Yeah. 
the, uh, the, yeah. the 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 plot twist and kind of just the the, the weirdness and uh, let, let's just say fuckedness of that uh, was the thing that like really made me say it, like really made it pop and come to life for me. Um, I'm happy that you. It sounds like you liked those with like being a local maximum as opposed to a global maximum. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there there are things about it that I liked. There are things that I did not like. Yeah. Um, I. Like again with the ending, uh, the particular characters who pop back up again, even though they um, were supposed to have been gone, mm-hmm. <laughs> like that was stupid, and yeah. that made me mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did not like the character, recurring character from the first game that came back, that you know wrecked the, the ending of the first game for me, mm-hmm. and came back and wrecked the the you know ending, like the feeling of consequence for the ending of the second game for me. Yeah. Uh, I did not like, you know, just, uh, several different, several different things about the ending for sure. Um, so I, I don't know, but like, there's still enough going on in there. There's enough pieces in play that I actually still enjoy that. It's like, you know, not like I'm going to spend a million dollars on playing another entry in this series, but Mm -hmm. like if somebody were to give it to me, I would play the game. I wouldn't just like let it you know sit in my backlog forever it would sit in my backlog for a while because everything does but yeah. you know i would get yeah. to it eventually fortunately i don't think you'd have to pay a million dollars i think it's like a like a 25 five dollar game <laughs> right <laughs> so. so yeah um and what's funny is that most of the things that i predicted uh about it when i was first talking about it and having my suspicions most of that stuff i said came true mm-hmm. um the character that I was, you know, dead set that I was convinced was going to come back did not. Although that's that line that I was like, they're not going to let that drop. They didn't let it drop. They no. brought that back up. Yeah. So, um, you know, it functionally, it still ended up being the same uh, equivalent. Yeah. So, but yeah, so that was Rampa 2. Any other questions about that or can I move on? I don't have any questions. Well, I don't have any right. questions. <laughs> well, so, um, do I have time to talk about one more? And I guess I'll have to leave the last thing for next time. I think we're so. Going. Okay, cool. So, uh, the last thing I'll talk about today is I picked up and have been playing Octopath Traveler again. Uh, as yeah. you got, remember, uh, I played the demo and I played mm-hmm. my max three hours and then I stopped. So, my main character is Therian, the thief, and I don't do not regret this decision. I love love Therian. I like his uh, character. I like his like power set or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I I would always want him in my party anyway, so it's great. Uh, as soon as I started up the game, I immediately changed the voiceover to Japanese, and I am so happy that I did because I like everyone a lot more now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hated Cyrus with the passion when I first started playing the game and then like i got because the demo is english only Mm -hmm. i got to switch it over to japanese and now suddenly like i'm like oh he's not so bad and like i tried i I just for just out of curiosity's sake after i got everybody i switched over to english for a little bit and i was like oh no (laughs) no (laughs) i need to switch it to japanese there's like again there's a lot of um liberties taken with the translation on this game um and there are a lot of things that I pick up, a lot of nuances of language that I pick up and character characterization that I hear in their voices and what word selection that they're using um, that I don't get out of the English version. So, um, yeah, I've enjoyed listening to the voiceover. The Japanese voiceover is very good. Nice. Uh, it's good, they, it's good one, that they give you the option. Yeah, yeah. English one, mm, I mean, some people like it. Uh, there are some pretty bad voices in there though yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway so i put in about 37 hours guys wow 37 and i'm still playing <laughs> that's about the time that's about the time that i start petering out so we'll yeah. see what happens if i'm setting it down soon or what um i have obtained all of the base classes as secondary classes and mm. assigned every character a secondary class um i have Two more characters to run through chapters two stories. Otherwise, every like six of the characters have already been run through up through chapter two. Um, Mm. I also have been doing a bunch of the side quests. And I have to say this, um, the side quests are great. None of them overstay their welcome. They are just long enough to get a breakup of activity without being so long as to get irritating. Mm. I like the fact that uh, some of them allow for different types of resolutions 
to the same problem. Uh, like there was at one point somebody that I that was like uh, beating up some some old guy, like had ha- given a hard time to this old guy, and like you could either go and challenge him and then like beat him in a fight and then you know like resolve it that way, or like I actually ended up reloading it because I had I had wandered to um, one of the other towns and there's like an amnesiac girl. And if you have her following you around, because there's like two or three amnesiacs for some reason, and like you just have to find who they belong to. So I just started picking up amnesiacs when I found them and just taking <laughs> them around to see who they who who uh, they belong to. And uh, you can actually bring her, and then turns out that oh, they're sister and brother, and and you can resolve it peacefully with the you know them being reunited or something. Um, so that's cool. Uh, what I like about it, though, is that you need to actually talk to all the townspeople and pay attention to what they say mm. in order to get clues about the side quest, because something somebody says in Sunshade might have something to do with something going on across the map somewhere else, you know, <laughs> like in, in wherever the hell the, the Boulder City or whatever is. Is, is, so, the, is the writing interesting enough to compel you to pay attention, or are you paying attention only because there are clues? No, there's actually uh interesting random stories with random random purposes like there are some things that are like fetch quests but it's always like a different different type of scenario and a different you know like it's not always like oh i now i have to go over here and buy this item and then come bring it back to this guy you know like it's yeah, not yeah. necessarily something like that sometimes you have to figure out a puzzle to figure out you know a way to get them something that will work for their needs you know yeah. or something like that and um like the basically your apothecary guy and or your uh, scholar have the ability to either talk up, you know, be very friendly with and talk up somebody to get information or to scrutinize them and then learn about them from studying them. And um, when you do that, there's like this little description that pops up about like who they are and what their their stuff, you know, whatever their their situation is at the time. And every single one of these is like detailed and interesting. <laughs> and it's like throwaway text that you don't even have to read, but it's there if you want to. And I totally, you know, do that to every single person in town and just spend a while getting to know everybody in every town I go to, see what the situation is, see what information they've got. Because sometimes, like I said, you can solve somebody else's problem in some other town by talking to people in this this other place halfway across the map so um yeah i've i've been enjoying the writing i've been enjoying talking to all the people in the villages like it hasn't gotten old or boring it doesn't feel like you know by and large most of what is being said is throwaway text it feels like you know it's it's got a reason, you know, it's, it fits somewhere, yeah. you know, like you don't have to engage with all those side stories, but you get money and you get items from doing that hmm. that help buff up your characters. And so it's really beneficial to go ahead and do all of those stories if you have the ability. Nice. Um, so, who yeah, you, I've been, who are you running in your party? Uh, I toggle between people all the time because I keep everybody evenly leveled. OK, so. Um, it just kind of varies depending upon whose story I'm on and what level everybody is because I basically take the lowest level characters that I've got at the time. So I, I have different combinations of parties all the time as a uh-huh. result of that. So um, I wanted to say, though, too, that I was surprised that I actually like all of the main characters because I really thought um, that I wouldn't like some of them like the warrior dude or the healer lady because – they're like stock standard character archetypes, you know, like all of them are, but like, I am not particularly usually a fan of the healer or the warrior, but I actually enjoy their personalities. Like, even though they are your standard, you know, okay, she's kind hearted and he's an honorable knight, you know, (laughs) the interactions with the others show them to be more multifaceted rather than just one dimensional. Like Ophelia, the healer, for example, is looking for something in the underbrush with Primrose, who is the dancer. And she, Primrose, the dancer, wears revealing side slit pants, you know, like belly dancy pants. And she's trying to find, like, Ophelia is trying to find a way to tell Prim that maybe she shouldn't be walking around in the underbrush because she's going to get all cut up because her legs are exposed. But, you know, this is really true. I know because I've been wondering, I have gotten into brush thanks to my sister wanting to go geocaching mm-hmm. when I'm like, 
you know, just got home from belly dance. Anyway, like I know from experience that shit happens and it sucks. Um, but she, but Ophelia, the healer, doesn't want to feel like she's doesn't want to sound like she's criticizing Prim's attire. So she ends up not actually explaining herself, and instead she's just like blushing <laughs> with embarrassment. Because she just doesn't know what to do. <laughs> and yeah. she just gets like, she's just embarrassed. And she's like, how do I even say this? Blush, 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 you know? Yeah. And Prim's like, uh, okay, whatever. And she goes off and does her thing. Yeah. Uh, at another point, Theory and the Thief is asking Ulrich, the night guy, how he, you know, he, the the warrior guy, would approach entering this guarded mansion that the party has to break into. And Ulrich gives this sensible response about finding um, the weakest point in exploiting it. And Therian was like, oh, I thought you'd be like a frontal assault kind of guy. <laughs> and Ulbrich's like, yeah, well, if I needed to be a, a frontal assault guy, I would be. But, you know, honestly, I'm kind of interested to see what you're going to do. Yeah. And he like the knight is actually interested in learning from the thief rather than <laughs> criticizing him for yeah. being a thief, even though he is an honorable knight, right. you know? So it's like the companions actually get along rather than just playing bit parts and playing into, again, those tropes, you know, yeah. <laughs> like they've got archetypes. They really could be leaning into them, but they're not like it, it, it's you know, it's really interesting. I mean, like it's it's not something that generally happens, at least not in the vintage of JRPG that I play hmm. where characters listen to each other as opposed yeah, to and, kind of saying mm -hmm. their appointed lines. And that's the thing is that these characters really do listen to each other and seem to consider each other, you know, like yeah. legitimately think about the other ones, you know, like and, and what would be the best for them and like worrying for each other and things like that. So but anyway, so far, my favorite characters are Therian, of course, and mm -hmm. then Cyrus, who is the scholar guy uh, who I thought I would hate him when I first saw him because i just couldn't stand him at first but he ended up turning into this crazy goofball of a guy who's like he is so into being a scholar that he like he is so into knowledge that he is just like does not understand how to communicate with other people in society normally like you know he will just say stuff that sounds like he's being real suave and, you know, trying to put the moves on one of the girls or something. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, no, it's just a fact. Can't I just say my opinion? And then they're just like, <laughs> you get in trouble, dude, because you keep on just popping off and you're handsome, you yeah. know, like, you know, and whatever. And he's like, oh, and, and at one point he has this whole melodramatic moment where he's like, oh, I am cursed to never understand the full depth of my beauty or something <laughs> like that. And you're yeah. just like, what in the hell is wrong mm -hmm. with you, bro? And it's just really funny. Yeah. But the girls actually, Ophelia, the healer lady, is my favorite. And then Primrose, the dancer lady. So, but I actually like all of the characters to, you know, in their own ways and, you know, all of that as well. Nice. So, uh, right about the time that I was feeling limited by the class specialization and stuff is when I started getting the secondary classes. Like, I stumbled across the first one of the, um, because like, there's a shrine you have to go to, mm. and it's like the shrines for all of these different classes are along the road between towns as you're going to like your chapter two locations and things like that. So yeah. you just kind of have to wander the map, and while you're wandering the map looking for treasure chests and stuff, there's also like extra um, caves and extra bonus areas you can go to that I haven't been required to go to yet. They're just mm. there that you can go poke around in if you want to. Uh, and I think that's pretty cool because I like to explore. So it's giving it's incentivizing uh, actually looking throughout the whole map, not just with treasure chests, but with other things to do. There are random people, uh, sometimes people who you need to help that are out in the map. They're not in the town. They're out in the map somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and then there's also, like I said, those shrines and things like that. Apparently there are shrines later on that have new classes that I haven't seen yet as well. I just haven't gotten to those areas yet because I'm not high enough level, but, um, I've been having fun with the secondary classes, um, uh, toggling between all of that. I don't know if I'm a hundred percent satisfied with my distribution. You can only have one person at a time assigned to any particular secondary class. So you can't just make everybody a secondary healer or whatever you want. You have to, you know, pick which one. And then like you have to unlock skills for that secondary class as well. So it's also a matter of like spending your skill points and like, how do you, how do you want to use those? Um, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, it's, uh, been fun. 
Nice. And also, uh, as you might imagine from me being Therian, I steal everything. Of course. Everything. That's a good way to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, I didn't even realize that the different colored chests meant that some of them were locked because my main guy is Therian. So, yeah. like, I always have Therian, <laughs> you know? Like, I, I always unlock all the chests. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah. So anyway, yeah, like I've been having fun with it. I've been enjoying it. I have not been slowing down at all. I've only slowed down this last weekend because I was kind of busy, you know, rucking forever. Running 20 miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, no big deal. Uh, I think yep. it's uh, I mean, I don't have too many observations about this. I think it's funny that the provocatively dressed dancer, uh, her nickname is Prim. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good, 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 good language joke there. But other than that, I'm just happy, happy you dig it. Yeah, I've been having fun with it. Your JRPG so, tear is extended for longer than I expected it to. Well, I wasn't necessarily going to jump back into a JRPG. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I, it was because I think uh, Octopath was on sale or something. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, anyway, I was like, well, I already started it and I want to play it, you know, so yeah. I'm just going to. Go on with it. So Definitely. I really kind of figured I'd be switching genres by now, too, but <laughs> I don't know. It's it continues like we'll see how long I go on this before I end up getting tired and then yeah. wanting to stop. But so like um, Ben, if I remember correctly, you were saying that in the later part of the game, it felt grindy or something. There was something you were not having fun with later in the game. What am what am I? Yeah, getting into? there's like a couple level three quests that I was not able to beat. And then some of the level fours. Uh, so there were like two level threes that I couldn't fin- get through. And then uh, everyone else was on their level four quest. So that's kind of mm-hmm. where I dropped off at, but oh, okay. Hopefully that does not happen to you. We will see. I mean, I, I like to explore and I like to do the side questy stuff. So uh, it might be the case, one of those cases where like, I don't actually have a problem with what level I'm at. It might be that possibly because I am wandering around so much and not necessarily immediately going from quest to quest, but uh, we will see what happens with that. Nice. Um, is that everything? Uh, I have one more real short one. If you want me to talk about it, otherwise I can wait. Um, go ahead. If it's, if, if it's short, I think we, we've it's been short. away for a while. Okay. So yeah. Cool. Okay. This one's called three fourths home. It is a short interactive fiction. I want to say I paid a couple of bucks for it on the switch, like the Nintendo eShop. Uh, it is basically a touching story about a girl and her family after she moved away and came back due to basically falling on some bad times. And hmm. you play as the girl, and she's on the phone with different people in her family while in transit to go wherever she's going. And uh, you select how you respond to questions and statements by whoever you're on the phone with, like your mom, your dad, your brother, that hmm. kind of thing. And how you respond changes how things play out. Um, and I, I obviously can't say too much about it because that's like the point of the whole thing and it's very short. So, uh, it, I will say that it struck a chord with me. Um, Mm -hmm. like a lot of the interactions felt really familiar and like real legitimate, you know? Um, so it's a good little game, uh, real low intensity, you know, like you are just selecting things, you know, responses to stuff on the phone. And that is that is how it goes. And I want to say it's like an hour or two. It's not a very, very long game yeah. whatsoever. It's like a real short experience. But it is um, definitely something that I enjoyed. I like the visuals quite so, a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's got some interesting visuals to it as well. And basically, like, for part of it, you are um, driving in your car. And so, like, you have the, you know, like, you have, to hold a trigger button to make your car drive in the direction because you're basically trying to go back home and you're on the phone with people from your house at that time as you're driving. Um, Well, they were, they're doing that because there's a big storm that's happening. So they want to make sure that you are okay. (laughs) Right. We Um, need to make sure you're okay. So uh, talk to us on the phone while you're driving. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yeah. So, um, and then the second section of the game you are walking around waiting for a bus and it's kind of like a prequel to what happens, you know, in the first section, like it kind of reverses, like time backs up and then you see what happened before she moved back home and that kind of a thing. Yeah. So, 
And like basically you just get to walk back and forth waiting for the bus and the bus, the bus will actually come and then leave and you're still on the phone and you haven't gotten on the bus because you're still in the middle of your conversation and that kind of a thing. So, um, yeah, like low intensity, but uh, an interesting little experience. And, you know, like I would say even, you know, fairly well replayable, too, because you just you might want to go back and see what some of the other responses would trigger, you know, Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I would recommend taking a look at it if you have time. Yeah. Looks neat. A little inter- interactive fiction game. Cool. That's it. Awesome. Well, that sounds like a show to me. How do you all feel about buttoning it up? I feel buttons. New Year's buttons. The credit. Thank you, everybody, for listening to The Level. This episode in particular, but, you know, if you've listened to others, that's cool, too. Um, we appreciate you taking the time. You may be wondering, Hey, last episode, you talked about the title of the year award. Um, we're doing, we're we're extending the voting just because the poll didn't go up, uh, at the proper time because of holidays and stuff. So, uh, we will talk about the results of that very self-indulgent practice next week, uh, or in the next episode. Um, I haven't even looked at the votes yet, so I don't know if there are any front runners to speak of. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep those open, uh, for you as well. So go to our social media channels and you will see, uh, the link to that. It is, I was about to say it's a brief survey. There's a whole bunch of entries on it. So (laughs) it is the longest survey. Um, (laughs) but we appreciate you doing that. We redesigned the Patreon. Uh, there's not an awful lot that affects this show aside from the presence of the ability, uh, for us to do kind of like off topic stuff, uh, in the Duckfeed presents, kind of channel so if you want to do any spoiler casts or you know the tabletop kind of stuff we talked about doing that that is probably where that will land thank you everybody for uh your support on that uh the warm reception that it has gotten has been uh really nice um and we appreciate that otherwise tell your friends rating reviews you do you know the stuff am i forgetting anything no okay you good well, what's up ben I said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I need to go feed my cat because she is baffled at me for her sitting in the same spot for eight hours. Uh, so, so uh, you need to feed yourself as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't had dinner. I had, I had, I had some. I had a, a couple of donut holes that were left over from a visit to my parents. Um, yeah, I need to. Uh, I don't know how I'm still alive. Uh, yeah. So I've been Cole Ross. Uh, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Cole Ross. I'm Jalachan in places. And I am Ben Merkel. Merkel will be on Twitch. And stick around for some titles. So we can take some, we, we, we can take contenders, but I think there really is only one that can, that can okay. be, uh, which is pick cross mitochondria and despair. <laughs> I had mitochondria, pick cross despair, but it's essentially the same thing. I also had two other ones other than, uh, mixing that up. Mm-hmm. I had snakes old news. I played him on the Wii. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I short that? Can I shorten that to snakes old news? You couldn't do that too. Yeah. Also, uh, uh uh-oh, we found a Ben hole. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to stylize that with an exclamation mark. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Ben? I did not have any titles. Okay. I I took this week off, guys. I had no news story and no titles. It's it's really weird how there's there's always one of us who does that. And when it's two, when two of us do that, it's a disaster. Yeah. (laughs) um cool how do we feel uh, do, do, do we want to make a case for uh uh any of these or is picross mitochondria and despair good picross mitochondria despair is fine Oakley, dokely yeah. cool well i need to go oh. oh yes oh quick question um did we post the toady on the actual level facebook page because if not somebody needs to do that oh uh, i will do that Cool. I don't. I don't believe that we did. So I'll. Uh... I did not. So if Dennis did not, then nobody did. <laughs> okay. Yep. I can. Uh, I can put it out. Groovy. Awesome. 
Well, take care, everybody. Get foods. Yeah, well. Yep. Yep. Take care. Bye. Bye bye.